Good morning to everybody. Are you blessed to be here? Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Uh, last Sunday, we didn't uh, do a live stream because of the uh, internet problem that we had. So we want to just apologize to our viewers that were, didn't understand what happened. Uh, some of them wrote and uh, asked what was going on here. So we apologize for the inconveniences. But today we are live. So we welcome all our live viewers and we pray that the Lord may bless you. And I welcome also those who are already in the house. Hallelujah. I pray that the Spirit of the Lord may bless us together as we continue with this service. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of, let's go to Revelation chapter number 3, verse 8. Revelation chapter number 3, verse 8. Revelation 3, 8. If you have it, you can put it on the screen so that we can read it together. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I say, I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door. And no one can shut it. For you have, little, you have a little strength. I've kept my word and I've not denied my name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It says, see, I have set a door before you. Today, during the course of this service, I'm going to emphasize on the ability to see. Hallelujah. He says, see, I have opened a door before you. Now, if the spirit has to point out the door, it means that it's not evident. Because if a door is open in front of you, no one needs to tell you there is a door. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You point out something to somebody that you feel he does not discern or know what it is. So the spirit says, see, I have opened a door before you. It means that if you don't see, you won't enter it. Hallelujah. So there is a connection with the seeing and your move. It says, see, I have opened the door. I don't know if you can discern this morning that a door is open in front of you. Hallelujah. I say, see, there is an open door. And if you don't see it, you won't enter it. Then somebody else enters it and you don't know what is happening with him. Hallelujah. Amen. Say, see. see. There, is there is an open door. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me stop there. I'll speak to you later because of this service. So we want to welcome all the first time visitors. And uh, if you are here for the very first time, I would love to see your hands where you are sitting so that we can welcome you. Quickly, let's go. First time visitors. Hallelujah. Can we, can we give a big hand to these people? <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, we are busy preparing to welcome you in a proper way in the Sundays to come. We will uh, welcome you in a proper way. We are still setting up here, so we are not ready yet. Guys, Hallelujah. We are still fi busy fixing stuff. Uh, myself, I haven't even started yet. I'm still laying foundations of a year. You see, everything, everything that you want to finish well, start well. Yeah. Hallelujah. Don't start wrong and try to catch up. Start well, then you have the advantage of starting well. So some of you, you rush through the year. For me, my preparation of the year can take me two months. The first two months of the year is my preparation. I have nothing to rush. Hallelujah. I come to my office. I don't see anyone. I'm here from the morning until four. I'm busy. I don't need to see anyone. I'm preparing my year. 
Now, the reason why so many people at the end of the year, they are disappointed is because they don't prepare well. <laughs> you don't hear what I'm saying. And Christians have that, that, that thing of not putting to practice the word that they hear. I don't know what is wrong with Christians. Let me check. How many people started meditation? Look at around you. The same message was put to everybody. You haven't started yet. Then, at the end of the year, you blame the preacher. Well, I don't know if what he said there was true. But you didn't do it. I said, you didn't do it. If we put ourselves into what the Lord says, we will have results. But if we don't do it, we won't have results. That's clear. He said, meditate. Then you will make your way prosperous. He didn't say, God will make your way prosperous. The wrong prayer is that, Lord, make me prosperous. He said, you will make your way. I started to teach you this since the beginning of the year, what you shouldn't pray for. Because there are some stuff you need to do. You don't need to pray. Hallelujah. And we want to, on that note, we thank God for everybody that has come today. Hallelujah. And people that are still coming. And we're all going to stand up. And uh, we welcome the visitors, but we're all going to stand up and uh, celebrate the Holy Spirit in our midst. Hallelujah. Can we stand up and celebrate the Spirit of God this morning? I say celebrate the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I say thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Woo. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I said, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Celebrate the Holy Spirit this morning. Give him praise. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated. And uh, now we want to invite, if there is nothing else, we want to invite the worship team. And they're going to lead us into the worship. Hallelujah. People, I want to emphasize again that you know that this year is a year of harvest. And we want you to invite people. Listen, I want to join me to me again. People are not responding sometimes. <laughs> you must, you should respond. Eh? Invite people. It does not cost anything to invite people. Just invite them. They can say yes or no. Hallelujah. And when they say yes, bring them. It's a year of harvest. We want you to respond when we ask you so that we may bring the people and then in the year of the harvest we may do, we may have a harvest. Hallelujah. Amen. So we want you to respond and uh, uh, next Sunday is the women's camp. So I believe that many will be away from the women's camp but you can still invite so that we will not feel the absence of a woman. Hallelujah. <laughs> may God bless you. Let's go into the worship. Hallelujah. Are you excited to be here this morning? Yes. The Lord is good. All and all the time. You know, one of the things that, um, as I'm approaching my birthday, that I had to reflect upon was, am I going to focus upon things that I think didn't happen, that I wanted to happen, or am I going to fo focus on what the Lord has done? The fact that I'm still calling upon his name. The fact that every morning when I wake up, his mercy are new for me. That he gives me opportunities over and over again. I have the blessing of new beginnings. Hallelujah. So we want to celebrate today the goodness of the Lord. Amen. Because he is a good God. Hallelujah. No matter what you've been through, you are here today. Which means there's an, op an opportunity for you to experience him. Amen. So just lift your voice before him right now and start to thank him. Start to bless his name. And say, Lord, you've done great things for me. Lord, you've done amazing things for me. Thank you for your faithfulness, O oh Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Lord, you are good to us. 
You are the rock on which we stand. There is no one like you, Lord. Oh, we bless your holy name. Hallelujah. Come on, mean it this morning. Let it come from your heart. That, Lord, you truly are good to me. That every day you give me an opportunity to arise again. You give me an opportunity for a new beginning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For you have a good plan for my life. Oh, celebrate him this morning. He has a great plan for your life. And his plan is to prosper you and not to harm you. To give you a future that is filled with hope. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your greatness. You've been so good to us. And you have great plans for us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We can trust your plans for us. We thank you, Jesus.
has done great things for us. Hallelujah. Oh! 
Yahweh, Yahweh here. Yahweh. Yahweh. Say it, Yahweh. Yahweh. Yahweh.
Healing is happening in the room. People are being healed right now. People are being released from diseases. Emotional healing is taking place. Continue, continue. Call his name. Yahweh. Is Yahweh. People are being healed right now. Hey. People are being healed. Start to do what you couldn't do before. Yahweh. And the release will come. up your hands toward heaven. Yahweh, have your way in our midst this morning. And may your anointing right now heal, deliver us, and touch now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. anointing of the Holy Ghost is in the room. I said the anointing of the Holy Ghost is in the room. Some of you, you need that God refreshes your relationship with him. And he's doing that right now. He's doing it right now. In the name of Jesus, he's doing it right now. He's doing it right now. Some of you, you've been so burdened at work and God is giving you a rest, is giving you a rest in your soul. Some of you, a financial burden has become too much and God is giving you rest for your soul. Right now, this is a moment. This is a moment. I say this is a moment. Receive your grace right now in the name of Jesus. I say... The anointing of God is going to come upon people right now as I speak. And the power of God is going to be delivered in this house right now. In the name of Jesus, right now, receive the anointing of the Holy Ghost. seated. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I felt like a heartburn. Her somebody suffers from a heartburn. I don't know who it is, but I felt like a heartburn. Somebody that suffers from heartburn. It comes from time to time. When it comes, it's that's a bit heavy on you. Stand there. In 
the name of Jesus. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I curse that disease. And I command it to go now. Now. Get ready. Now. Now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Right now. Receive your healing. Receive your healing right now. Take. Take that anointing of healing. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Heal. Heal, my brother. Heal, my brother. God. Save healing right now. Save healing. In the name of Jesus. You can heal. Hallelujah. Thank you, worship team. I'll call you later. Hallelujah. I saw a vision of a young couple that want to go overseas. I saw a vision of a young couple that want to go overseas. Now, the country where they want to go, the two of them have different countries in mind. But they want to go overseas. I saw that vision. So I don't know if the people are here or are online, but I saw that vision. If you are here in the house, can you just stand up? I want to pray for you. For unity. If you are here, you stand up. I will pray for you. I saw that vision of a couple that want to go overseas. Overseas. It's between, I think, America and... Uh, and Europe. That's the destination the two of them are having in mind. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, when I say couple, I don't necessarily mean they are married already. I mean they are together. So, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, I'm going to ask this one. And we're going to continue. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Today is Sunday, the 13th of February. And uh, I just want to share something quickly with you. But before I share... I want to elaborate on a principle so that you can hear and receive what I'm going to share. Hallelujah. I want you to put me a, a scripture in the book of Luke. Luke chapter number 18, verse 17. Just put it there. Luke 18, 17. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He said, Assuredly, assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. Let's read it together. One, two, three. No, no, don't go to 18. We, I say just 17. Don't get to 18, yes. Now put me John chapter number 3, verse 5. John 3, 5. Before I even announce the topic, John 3, 5. Let's go there. Okay, read it. One, two, three. Now, do you understand? Luke 18 says, if you don't receive it as a child, you can't enter it. 
Matthew come, John comes and says, if you are not born again, you can enter it. Do you understand? Two different truths. He said, if you don't receive the kingdom as a child, you won't enter it. On the other side, John said, if you are not born again, you can't enter it. These are two truths that display two things. Is it when we are born again we enter it, or is it when we receive the kingdom? Hallelujah. Now, I know that some people believe that receiving the kingdom means that being born again, which is, can be connected, but I want to show you a difference here so that I can tell you why I'm saying this. Now, Luke is talking about if you don't receive like. Hallelujah. So Luke is talking about more an attitude. He said, if you don't receive like a children, a child, you will not. So Luke is his emphasis is on the attitude. Hallelujah. John emphasis is not on the attitude. John emphasis is on the disposition of the heart. Hallelujah. Your attitude, it's like, let me give you an example. It's like I come and I say it. If you don't have a key, you can't enter the house. Then I say, if you don't open the door, you can't enter. If you don't have a key, you can't enter. But then I say, but somebody comes and says, no, if you don't open, you can't enter. So you can have a key, but if you don't open it, you will not enter. Now you can come with the intention of opening it, but if you don't have a key, you can't enter still. Two things for a same purpose, but different way of operating it. So when the message is preached, it's not just your heart that must be touched, but your attitude must change. Ah. So whatever I'm going to state here, you need to have a right heart and the right attitude. Otherwise, it will not be beneficial to you. Come on now. You can have a key, but if you don't put an effort to open, you will not get in. You can try to open, but if you don't have a key, you will not enter still. So attitude plus heart gives the kingdom. You see? Because people think that the kingdom is acquired just by me being born again, but you have to have an attitude of how to receive it. Because the things of the kingdom are foolishness for those who are perishing, but are spiritual for those who are having life. So why am I saying this? Because what I'm going to say might shock some of you. I need to explain it. So today I'm going to talk about how to receive an answer through the prayer of faith. Remember I'm talking about dealing with a new covenant sent. How to receive an answer through the prayer of faith. Say it. Say it again. Now, there is a scripture that every believer should know. Yes. If you don't know that scripture, you will not function well. Mark eleven twenty four. This one, if you don't know it, it means that your kingdom base is wrong. Yes. And I understand why so many people in the kingdom are struggling. Because people want to acquire a result without going through the way. Many people try to worship God without the way. Jesus came and said, I am the way. It means this is the way to get to the Father. People say, no, we don't want it. We want the Father without the way. It does not work like that. So there is a way to function in the kingdom. If you don't know it, you are a wanderer in the land. You are in the land of Nod. 
where Cain was. Hallelujah. So let's read Mark eleven twenty four. I know this scripture. I know it. You can wake me up in the night, and I'll say it to you. Hallelujah. He said, "Therefore, therefore, I say to you, whatsoever thing you are, you pray. Whatever you ask, when when you pray, believe that you have received, and then." And you will have them. Let's say it. One, two, three. Now, there is a 23 that says, Truly, truly, I tell you, if you say to this mountain, Be thou removed and do not doubt in your heart, but believe that the thing that you say should happen, you will have whatever you say. Now, verse 25, connected to prayer, it says, therefore, when you pray, if you have anything against somebody, forgive. I'm going to connect all of them to you today. Hallelujah. This is something that, if you don't know it, please go home today and spend five hours learning this one. Hallelujah. Now, the prayer of faith. There are many kinds of prayers. Many kinds. But there's a prayer that is called the prayer of faith. Hallelujah. And the book of James speaks about the prayer of faith. James chapter number 5, verse 15. James 5, 15. Let's go to James 5, 15. Say, if anyone is sick, let he call the elders, anoint him with oil, and the prayer of faith shall heal the sick. Let, let's read it. Okay. It said, okay, let's go to Okay, and the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if you have committed any sin, it will be forgiven. There's a prayer of faith. And that prayer is not the prayer that you do, Lord, please, Lord, wait, Lord, yeah, Lord. No, that's not a territory prayer. It's not a strike prayer. You know when people strike, they say many things. This one says, we want government to do that. This one, they are together by different boards. So sometimes prayers are like that. It's confusing. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to take you through a step of prayer, of faith, so that you may receive. Hallelujah. Now, Mark 11, 24 is placed in a very specific context. It's placed in the context of Jesus cursing the tree. Hallelujah. Where Jesus said to the tree, let no man eat food from you ever again. And what Jesus said happened. So in verse 20, the Bible says, in the morning when they were going by the same way, Peter remembering what was done to the tree, said to Jesus, the fig tree you which you curse has dried up. And Jesus turning to Peter said, have the faith of God. Hallelujah. Have the faith of God. Remember the disciples were surprised that the tree was dry. But Jesus saw the dry tree the day he spoke. So when he was passing by, he was not looking for that tree anymore because as far as he concerned, the tree was already dealt with. And Peter and the disciples were still checking out if what Jesus said will happen. Now, I'm still introducing my message. You see, people, Jesus does not want us to mimic what he does. Yes. You see, there was an occasion where Jesus, in the book, same book of Mark 9, Jesus cast out the devils of somebody that was... Uh, Possessed by a demon of epilepsy. Now, the boy was rolling on the ground, and that's where Mark 9, 23 comes in. And when the father saw Jesus, he said to Jesus, Oh, my Jesus, your disciples have tried it, but they did not. But if you can do any, something, Jesus says in Mark 9, 23, if you can do it, if you can believe, all things are possible to the one that believes. Now, the Bible says, and Jesus rebuked the spirit. 
And then when he was away, the disciple came to him and they said, Master, why couldn't we do it? Do you know why they asked that question? Because they did it the way Jesus did it. They didn't work. They have seen Jesus casting out devils. So they came and they said, you, you foul spirit, we adjure you. Come out of this boy. And the spirit said, I'm not coming out. So then they said, let's try the other one. The other one, Jesus said to the spirit, what's your name? I said, what's your name? He said, I don't tell you my name. Ha! Huh? They have tried everything Jesus did. That's what people do. We prayed, we had faith, and he still died. We, we have faith. We did it the same way Jesus did it. But ours didn't work. And they came to Jesus and they said, Master, why couldn't we do it? He said, because of your unbelief. It connected the failure to the heart, not to the, not to the strength of a demon. It was not that that demon was so strong, but it was the state of the heart. They have the right attitude without the right heart. They thought we have power over this thing. In the name of Jesus, get out. He said, no, I'm not getting out. Now Jesus taught, taught, taught them something. It's your heart. So the prayer of faith takes on your heart. That's why verse 25, he says, if you have something against somebody. Because if you entertain things in your heart, you are not a candidate for faith because faith works through love. So you can't have faith. You are faith, but you can't work it out. Hallelujah. So the prayer of faith is connected to the heart, directly to the heart. So before you say Jesus didn't do it, check your, not just your attitude toward the word because you have a good attitude. I have the life of God in me. The power of God is in me. But is my heart consistent to what I'm saying? Because people say, this man had faith and he died. Who told you he had faith? He confessed, but who told you he had faith? That's why sometimes people try to change the word. When it does not work, they come with a theology. No, it's not every time God wants to do it because sometimes God does not. No, the problem is that it's not God. It's your heart. Uh, Let me ask you a question. Is there any instance in the life of Jesus when he went to somebody and he said, you know what, I don't think your father wanted to do it. (laughs) Have you seen that? Whenever he got exposed, he did it. And he said in John 14, 12, you will do what I'm doing. But greater works than this shall we also do because I'm going to the father. The problem is not with Jesus. The problem is with the heart of men. Because many times when we confess, fear is in our heart. Hallelujah. There is a young man that I saw him this week. uh, And he said something that is very important. And I went to look. uh, I I met him. His his name is Albert. And he said something very important to me when we were talking. And he said, and that was a, a thing that I learned from this young man. What he said. We were talking and he said, you know what? The opposite of faith is not fear. So I'm listening. What do you mean? He said, the opposite of faith is sight. And then I said, I didn't say anything to him. I went home and I was reflecting. And the Holy Spirit took me to 2 Timothy 5, 7. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 say, we don't walk by sight, but by faith. And that is the answer. It means whenever you are on sight, you are not on faith. So whenever you consider your condition, you're not in faith anymore. You are in sight. I went and the Holy Spirit started to talk to me. Open one sentence the guy told me. He did not even explain. He said, no, the opposite of faith is sight. And then we went on and talking about something else. And I said, I need to reflect on that. And you know what? Truly, 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 if you are on sight... If you walk by sight, you are not walking by faith. For you to walk by faith, you need to walk by another principle that is 
opposite the physical sight, which is the sight of a spirit. And the sight of a spirit is different from the sight of the man. Because, listen, do you know that spirit don't see walls? There is no existing walls in the spiritual world. That's why Jesus, when he rose from the dead, they said the door were locked and he came in. Because for him there was no walls. That dimension of limitation was not there anymore. So when you walk in the spirit, there is no limitation in your life anymore. Because you go above the sights and now you are in the sight of the spirit. And as far as the spirit is concerned, what we are talking about does not exist. Your spirit can walk if you are crippled. The reason why you think you can't walk is because you have reduced yourself to the physical sight. Come on. Come on now. Now let's go to the prayer of faith. I want to take you through the steps. Prayer of faith. The first step in a prayer of faith. Let me take my notebook. The first step, because you have to put it down. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. you must go through this message again and again and again. If you do that, nothing shall be impossible to you. I'm telling you the truth. I have experienced it. I have lived it. I have lived it. This faith I'm talking about delivered many things into my hands. You know, I'm not a man that stands here. God gave me this. God, gave me. I don't do that. But this faith that I'm talking has delivered things in my hands that human beings cannot deliver in my hands. I give my testimony to some people and say it's not possible. I say it was possible for me. Last time I was sitting with a lawyer and I was giving a testimony of what happened to me. He said, I am a lawyer. What you are telling me, it does not exist. I say it does. I am sitting here. It happened to me. So I'm going to teach you something that works in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh So the prayer of faith. Number one thing on prayer of faith, when you want to pray, before even you pray, before even you pray, you must have what we call a, a clear and definite idea of what you want. That's the first thing. Before even you pray, have a clear and definite idea of what you want. Because God is not there to answer prayers that we throw in the air. Hallelujah. Let me give you an, Mark chapter number 10. Verse 51, Mark 10, 51. Let's read it. Mark 10, 51. Oh, this is the month of supernatural accomplishments. Uh huh. Mark 10, 51. Go quickly, media people. Be quick with me so that we can uh, finish. Mark 10. Jesus answered and said to him, what do you want me to do for you? Verse 52. The blind man said, verse 50. Uh, okay. The blind man said, Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. Stop there. Do you think Jesus didn't know the guy was blind? Do you think he didn't know when the guy was coming, it's for him probably to see? But Jesus wanted him to have a definite request. Yes. Haven't you read the Bible that says, knock and the door shall be open? Have you read that scripture? Do you think God does not know you are behind the door? Do you think he doesn't know you are there? But he said, unless you knock, me, I'm not alone. You need to have a definite action of intention. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need to have a definite action, the request. Lord, I want to see. Hallelujah. He meet the crippled man that is crippled for 38 years, and he asked the guy, do you want to be healed? But the guy was at the pool. So already, at the pool is a testimony that it's like you find somebody on hospital lying on bed and say, do you want to be treated? <laughs> but why am I here? Imagine your doctor comes to you on the hospital bed. He says, how are you doing? Fine. Oh, you book into the yes. Do you want us to check on you? <laughs> ah, that's why I'm here. That's what Jesus is asking the guy. He is a healer. And he said, do you want to, to be healed? And sometimes we think Jesus was testing the guy. No, Jesus wants him to say yes. He wants him to say, this is why I'm here. So that's why the guy was talking nonsense. He said, okay, stop. 
you don't understand me, you stand up. He said, do you want to be healed? The guy start to give his CV to Jesus. I've been here for long. And when I want to stand up, somebody else stands up. You know people in the kingdom that are always uh, victims. Somebody else. Have you seen that of It's always the fault of somebody else. I left the church because somebody looked at me in a funny way. You? I left the church because they did that. Huh? Bye-bye. We will see you in heaven. Now, you need to have a definite, a definite request. Hallelujah. Now, when... Ooh, Hallelujah. A definite request. Say, for instance, you want Jesus to bless your prayer life. You don't pray, Lord, bless my prayer life. Bless my prayer life. It does not work like that. You go to him, you say, Holy Spirit, I want to spend one hour with you every day. Strengthen me to spend those hours. That's all. You can't go there. Bless my prayer life. But for what? You have a goal. And if that goal that you want to achieve, that's what you bring to God. You bring your goals to God. Holy Spirit. Now, you, you, some of you want to be married. You are praying and your husband does not go. Come because you don't even know what you want. Lord, please give me a husband. <laughs> you don't even know if you want to marry a South African, a, somebody overseas. You don't know if you want him to be a bit tall. You don't, you don't even know anything. Then you ask him to bring you something. You know why he's not bringing Because he did that to Adam. Adam blamed him. <laughs> Adam was sleeping. When he woke up, here is a woman. He said, oh, this is flesh of my flesh. Born or I shall call a woman. <laughs> then when God was troubled, he said, the wife you gave me, which I didn't ask for, So now you must be responsible. You must define what you want. Then when he brings, you won't say the one you brought me. You say the one I ask you. Yeah. You guys must know that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God heal me. God heal me. God heal me. Why? You say, Lord, these legs of mine, they need to preach the gospel. Now I'm stuck. I know by your strap I'm healed. But I want to tell you why I want to be healed, actually. Because I want to be used for your kingdom. Kingdom purpose. You see, Anna had a problem. She was asking for a child because she wanted to give birth. And then the rival was tormenting her. Whenever Anna came, the rival said, you are barren, you are barren, you are barren, you are barren, you are barren. Anna didn't know. She was fighting the rival until she understood that I need to make a definite request to God. She went to the altar. She said, I'm asking you a child, but I'm asking you a prophet. Ah. She said, what I'm asking you is a prophet I'm asking. I'm not asking for any type of child. I'm asking for a prophet because he will be in your house. God said, now we are talking. Because I'm in need of a prophet. Somebody say, I want to give you my womb so that... I want to avail my womb so that you can put a prophet inside because this one is old. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hmm. No, I'm, you are not prayed yet. Don't, this is not just prayer. This is to preparation for prayer. Yes. 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 You know, when I was growing up, I was always saying that my wife will be tall. I always say to the people, I'll marry a tall woman. Then I had a girlfriend that was short. It was not matching <laughs> what I said. And then in my ignorance, I said, this will be my wife, but she was my wife. Not that there's nothing wrong with it. It was, was my choice. Huh? So there's nothing wrong with it. So I said, this is my wife. And then 
Later on, we broke up. And I was crying. I said, God, why? You say you want a tall one, not a short one. <laughs> and then I met this one. That matches what I ask for. Yeah. Hallelujah. So I asked. I ordered her in the, from the spirit realm. And I said, this is what I want. Hallelujah. Second thing, before even you pray, second thing, you need to see what you ask through the eyes of the Spirit before even you can ask God. I'll give you scriptures. Hallelujah. Joshua chapter number 6, verse 2. Joshua 6, 2. Because I don't want to say things without showing me the script. Joshua 6, 2. Let's read. I have seven steps. Then you, you get Joshua 6, Two. Let's read. He said, and the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given into your hands its king, its mighty men of valor. Talking about Jericho. If you can't see it, you can't get it. I don't know if you care what I'm saying. If you can't see it, you will never get it. Jericho was still standing. When God said to Joshua, see it. See. Why do you think God called Abraham out of the tent when he wants to bless him? So that Abraham can have a vision of what God wants to do. He said, look at the stars. Have a vision of them. Look at the sand. Have a vision. That's your destiny. So you need to know that whatever God, you want to ask God, you need to see it first. It needs to be definite and you need to see it. Somebody say, ah, I can't see. There is no gift of vision. Okay. When you read the Bible, have you ever seen that he said that uh, the gift of uh, uh, knowledge, the gift of the word of God, and the gift of vision? Did you read that? No. Because vision is a function of the, man, of the mind of a man. Hallelujah. Vision is not a gift. Everybody can have vision. Hallelujah. Can I give you a vision right now? Eh? How many people have gone to the mall of uh, Waterfront? How many people have been there at least once in their lives? How many people? Okay. Close your eyes. See the Waterfront. Do you see it? Do you see it? That vision. Vision is a function of images in your mind. Hey. Hey. I say, hey, let me take you somewhere. Matthew chapter number 5, verse 28. Do you have time today? Yes. Hey, when we finish that, you're going to collect some stuff in your life that you have never collected before. Because you thought God didn't want to give it, but it's because you didn't know how to get it. Matthew 5, 28. Let's read it. My wife, this is your birthday. This is a gift, birthday gift. <laughs> Matthew 5, 28. Let's go. But I say to you, whoever, that whoever looks, okay, read it for yourself. One, two, three. But I say to you, that whoever looks at a woman to last after has already committed adultery with her. This is a function of imagination. He said, if you look at a woman and you imagine in your mind that you are already being intimate with her, you have already done it. Now, if the negative part is true, what about the positive part? If I can imagine a relationship with a woman and God said, when you imagine it's already done, what about if I imagine my relationship with God? <laughs> what about if I can think of what my relationship with God is like in my spirit already? Hallelujah. Many years ago, one of my friends gave his testimony. He blessed, his car. he blessed somebody with his car, so he was without car. And then he was trusting God, and God says, can you see what you want? 
Then you say, yes. God say, okay, you can see it. He say, yes. He say, okay. So behave like you see it. So every morning he goes into his garage, empty garage, and he starts to drive his car from the garage. It took him three months, and the car was in the garage. You have left all this to the devil. Because that's why, that's why I started with what? <laughs> that's why I started with what I started, because you don't know this principle. Eh? Some of you are scared of it. You see, if you can imagine that you have slept with a woman, you have already done it. If you go to the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter number 11, the Tower of Babel. Do you know the story of the Tower of Babel? Do you know that in the Tower of Babel, before they built it, it was already built in their mind? So when God said, let's go down and see the city they have built, they haven't built it yet. It was still a project. But it was so real in their mind that for God it was done. Because your mind speaks louder in heaven than your mouth, if you don't know. Let me tell you that. Yes. Yes. Your mind is louder in heaven than your own mouth. That's why Jesus said, the intention of your heart will be judged. You haven't even said it yet, but for God it's done. That's why I said that if you hate your brother, sometimes you don't need to tell it. It's in your heart. But you say you have already killed him. So before even you can take a knife, you already done it. That's why Abraham was dead. Isaac was dead. The Bible says that, that when God said to Abraham to offer Isaac, in the spirit, Isaac was already dead. The moment Abraham said yes, Isaac was dead. So when Isaac was paid, it was a resurrection. Ah. So number one, what is the principle number one? Have a definite and clear. So it means put down what you want. Number two, what must you do? See it. Hallelujah. Number three. Number three, now you pray and ask what you see. Hallelujah. So let's say this lady is trusting God for a baby. The baby will not come until you see the baby. You want your baby with curly hair, brown eyes. You, is that what you want? If you want that, that's what you call for. Because God does not just bring you a baby. You don't understand that one. Because if you can call what you see, the Bible says it calls the things that are not as if they are like a shitabaha. The reason why he can call them like that is because he has seen them already. So when he sees it, he calls it. So before you, you when you, you, have, you have a definite request, you see it, then you call it forth by prayer. You pray it. Then the Bible says in John chapter 14, verse 13 to 14, he says, whatsoever you ask in my name, I shall do. Hallelujah. Now, after you have prayed, number four, Keep it alive in your spirit. Because some people pray and they forget. It means that if I have prayed for the baby, wherever I go, I see my baby. When I wake up in the morning, I see my baby. When I'm sleeping, I see my baby. My baby is with me all the time. It means that I have a baby room already. It means that I have a baby. You want God to give you a baby, you, don't have a, you didn't prepare a baby room. You want to fall pregnant before. God does not work like that. You, you want a job, and you wake up at 10 a.m. A man that wants a job wake up at the time he wants to go to work. And he behaves like he's a, a man that is working. He has his coffee, and then he, he, he takes his computer, and he works. But you can't sleep until 10 and, no, please give me work. No, lazy, lazy, lazy. Hallelujah. Amen. Keep it as a burning desire. I say keep it as a burning desire. Keep it as a burning desire. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I told you a testimony where we went to Israel and we got the visa at number 99. Some of you know. You know that when, even when they refused us the visa, I saw myself in the plane. Yes. 
Is that, there was no doubt about that. I knew I would be in the plane. So when I was putting my luggages here, it was a Monday, putting in my car and going to Johannesburg to get into the plane. I didn't have a visa, but I knew I would be in the plane. So I traveled to Johannesburg. And I got the visa from the embassy of Israel. Thing that take two weeks, took just a few hours and they gave it to me. After they have received, refused free time. But I had a burning desire in my heart. I knew I would be in Israel. So I don't care what the embassy says. I care what God says. If you walk by sight, you are not in faith. Do you understand that? The Bible says in Proverbs 10, 24. Let's go quickly. Proverbs 10, 24. Proverbs 10, 24. Proverbs 10, 24. Thank you, Jesus. Are you guys taking down? He said, the fear of a wicked will come upon him, and the desire of a righteous will be granted. Let it be a desire in your heart. Hallelujah. Number five. Then have the assurance of what you ask for. It means no doubt. Assurance of what you ask for. That's where we read Mark eleven twenty four. 24. He say, when you pray, believe. Believe is the assurance in your heart. He said, believe that you have received it. And I taught you that receiving is in the spirit. So it means that in the spirit you have already obtained it. So when people ask, you have it. You know, I was touched by the testimony of the elderly Zulu here in South Africa. You don't know him. Because he was long ago, he's long ago gone. He was ministering and... Uh, I read through the books of the history of the God's generals that many don't know. You understand? Many don't know. But sometimes there are more generals in Africa than the, wife, the guy in Western Europe that you are talking about there. The generals in Africa, they did think people didn't record it. Yes. I know a general in, South, in Africa. You know this, this guy, when he's ministering, he's hovering over the, 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 the air. It's not witchcraft. The power of God comes upon him and he harvests like this. It's not the Smith Google's web. It's not these guys. I'm talking about real people in Africa here that commanded, I know one, when he has his conference, he does not go to fish, he does not bite, he goes to the river and he says to the fish, come, we have conference. And the fish will swim to him and he collects them on a bucket. And he goes to the pastor's conference with the fish. That's the dimension we are talking about. These people were didn't write about because they were not literate. And their disciples didn't know how to write. We heard them by mouth of people that were witness of what happened. How many people you can see can go to the river and say, fish, I have a conference. And we need some of you to feed the pastors. Then you see the fish swim me in. Because no one wants to miss at that divine appointment to be eaten. <laughs> Jesus did that. He said, put your net to the right side. Who? That word called the fish. Then they call all their relative uncles. They said, you don't miss this one. The master is calling her unto death is glory. Then they went. Have the assurance of what you ask for. When people ask you, you say, I have it. So the old man that I talk about, he was praying for a bicycle. So Sunday he came to church, he said, praise God, God bless me with a bicycle. The people went with him home to see the bicycle. They got there, no bicycle. So following Sunday, they followed him. Third Sunday, they said, we are not following you anymore, you are crazy. And after a few weeks, he said to them, guys, I told you I have a bicycle. Some didn't go. The one that went, we were shouting. Ha! Ah, in those days, bicycle are all races. Yeah, the bicycle is here. He does not have money, but he could get the bicycle. He said, it was here since the time I told you. But you couldn't see it because you were in sight. I saw this bicycle standing in my room long ago. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Number six. You call it forth. It's not prayer anymore. Because that one, you don't address it to God anymore. You address it to the thing. He said, if you say to the mountain, be that removed and don't doubt in your heart. But believe that the thing that you say, you, it will happen, you will have whatsoever you say. Hallelujah. You, you say it. You say it in the spirit. You say it with people. You testify. You know how God taught me that? Don't do that. Eh? This is risky. I was writing, I was studying accounting, and I was writing my last degree before I finished. And when we wrote, it was a youth conference, and the Lord told me, testify. So I went in front of people. I said, what must I say? He said, tell them that you passed. Don't do that. Eh? <laughs> so I went there. I said, praise God. I passed my exam. And my friends were confused because we just finished to write a day ago. They said, when did you give you a result? I said, no, last night the Lord gave me my result. I got it. Guess what? After a month they gave a result, I failed. <laughs> I felt like such a false prophet. <laughs> so, you know, what did I do? 6 a.m., I caught the bus out of the city. No one should ask me. I was so ashamed. I went the way, place where I went, like 400 cases from where I used to say, went to my dad, and then I was there sleeping every morning, depressed in my room, oppressed by the devil, depressed by my own circumstances. People poor me. And after a month, 6 a.m. one morning, my father knocked at my door. He said, Elise, he woke me up. He said, what? I said, dad, what? He said, you pass your exam. I said, dad, when? My dad was shaking. He said, the minister just announced something. They say at the government meeting, they decided to do the, 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 the papers of a student. They decided to go and mark it again because they believed that some people were supposed to pass and they failed. First time in Ivory Coast ever. My father said, that's why I say you pass. And I said, so when are they going to give you a result? He said, they will tell us. After a week, they say the result of it. I climb into the same bus. <laughs> Going back. When I got there, guess what? My name was written. Hey, 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 hey. So, it happened once and it never happened again. My wife is here. It never happened again in the country. Because of me, God moved the government. The government was moved to make a decision because of a single man that testified. And you know what God was teaching me? God said, son, you know, it's by mercy I gave to you because you failed your confession. You were afraid because you thought it's the end. But with me, nothing is finished. I'll give you a last example, then i go to the last point. Lazarus died. But do you know that before Lazarus died, Jesus told them Lazarus will not die? Do you know that? He said, this sickness is not unto death. The people that were sent to Jesus to come and tell Jesus Lazarus was sick, he told them, go back, the sickness is not unto death. So they went to Martha and Mary, and they told them, the master says, this sickness will not kill Lazarus. And in the meantime, they were confessing Lazarus will not die. Even when he was sick, they can say, hmm, Jesus said, but this guy, the cough that we are hearing now, it's not nice. Then one night they hear, oh, <laughs> ah, Jesus. Cough is dead. <laughs> now we were talking between themselves. Mary, do you think Jesus missed it this time? <laughs> I think so. You can be as a good prophet, but sometimes you miss it. So we don't want to go as far to say it's a false, but I think he missed it this time. Four days, Jesus comes. Jesus comes. The sister ran. Lord, if you have been here, my brother will not die. He said, no. I am the resurrection. No, he said first, your brother will rise. He said, yeah, I know that. Because Daniel talked about. In the book of Daniel, they say the dead will rise. So I know it will rise. Jesus said, no, no, I am 
the resurrection and the life. After that, the other sister came, say the same thing. They repeat the same thing. It means they've been talking. <laughs> what are the odds for them to say the same thing to Jesus? So Jesus came. And he wanted to show people that for him it never lay because he holds all answers in his hand. And his life, and life through him can give life to the dead. So when Jesus went to the grave, I told you before, I preached that many times, that Jesus never speak about, spoke about death. Because he said Lazarus will not die. So what happened there? That's, it does not consider as death. Consider as just sleeping. They said Lazarus come off. Well, yeah, Lazarus walks. Come. You know, people, it doesn't matter what happened until Jesus tells you stop, don't stop. Yes. Don't, until Jesus tells you himself, don't stop. Carry on. I say carry on. Yeah. Carry on. Yeah. Shh. Ooh. Now, the last thing is to act upon what you ask. Because you ask most and you believe, so you start to act upon it. Hallelujah. You start to, be, you start to act like if it's there, but it's there. Hallelujah. So you start to do it. Even when you think you couldn't, you do it because you are not bound by the natural. When you do that, you always get the result. Without fail. I say without fail, Amen. you will get the result. Amen. You will get the result. I say you will get the result. Amen. You wanted the job. Did you see the job? Did you see it? Did you saw your office? Did you see your office? You wish God would give you a promotion. He does not, he does not do that. It, promotion comes from him, but promotion is given to those who work according to what God says. Look at, when he, the commander of God's army came to Joshua, Joshua asked him, are you for us or against us? He didn't say to Joshua, I'm with you. He said, I'm the, I'm the commander of the Lord's army and I've been sent. He was telling Joshua, whoever aligns himself to God, I'm for him. So if you can align yourself to what God says, God is with you. And he does it. Amen. Do you hear what I'm saying? Amen. I want you to go home and exercise this. Eh? And don't get discouraged. Oh, it didn't work. Huh? No. When you do that, you lose everything. Hallelujah. Amen. I say hallelujah. Amen. For everything in life. You see, I know I am anointed. You guys don't need to tell me that. I know that one. You see that? I know it. So, so when I come to church to pray and you are not there, then I start to speak. You are healed. Yeah. You, you are already healed. Amen. Oh, this chair, you are healed. I see it. Amen. Whenever I come into an empty chair, I, chair, I see you. Amen. I minister to you without you being here. Amen. I see it. I see it. Young evangelists, you want the crowd to see it before. Stop trusting God that he will bring it somehow. See it. Call it forth. It shall come to pass. You want to sing to the nation? Have you seen yourself on stage in nations already? Or you are, you are trusting that sometime God will pick you and put you... It does not work like that. You must see yourself. Ask a definite request. Lord, you have called me. I want to sing for, the, for your glory to this number of crowd. It's not just about the crowd, but it's about what you are putting me. I want 1,000 people to hear it. I want 2,000 people to hear it. I want 500 people to hear it. What is your definite request to God? Hallelujah. Amen. I say hallelujah. Amen. You know that you cannot buy a building without putting an offer. In your offer, do you put a number or you say, I want to buy the building? What do you do? Because you are definite. And then when you put an offer, they judge you according to your offer. So why do you think prayer does not work like that? You never put an offer. You just come and say, it's like God is selling, and you say, Lord, I want to buy it. How? No, I want to buy it. Write me what you want. No, I want to buy it. Don't you understand? I want to buy it. 
He said, but how can you do the transaction? Just do it. I want to buy it. Oh, Lord, set me free. Set me free. Oh, I'm tired. Can't you see I'm struggling? And then you backslide. Lord, I'm struggling too much. Lord, I'm struggling too much. Can't you see? You think you touch God by your tears. God is moved by your faith, not your tears. Hallelujah. Can we give a big hand to our Lord? I said, can we give a big hand to our Lord? That's how the new covenant person works. You must go and listen to this again and put it to practice. And before you even pray, prepare your heart for prayer. Prayer is not something you jump on. No, 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 no. You're not a prophet of Baal. That's why some, some of you just pray in tongues because you don't know what to say. I'm finished. What did you pray for? I don't know. The spirit knows. The spirit knows. And praying in tongues is good. I pray a lot in tongues. But I engage my mind also. Yes. We're not people who wrote a brain. Hallelujah. We are people that are articulate. That can go before the throne of God and tell him exactly what we want. Daniel went before the throne. He said exactly what he wanted. He didn't go there. No, he didn't go there. He said, Lord, you say in your word that 70 years is decreed. That after 70 years we will go. He said, while I was praying and making petition, the angel of the Lord came to me. Some of you need to know how to make petition and request. And then you back it in tongue. You, f- you spend five hours. After five hours. Whew, rabababa. <laughs> Charisma- oh, very charismatic people. You come out after five hours and ask you, what did you pray for? I don't know. Ah! That's why you fail in your relationship. Because relationship is a conscious thing. We engage. I, imagine I go to my wife. Ba, 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 ba. Ra, ba, 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 ba. <laughs> Woo! Ha. I, I, I don't need to speak down. I speak in tongues. A lot. I don't want to talk like Paul. Because some of you, maybe you pray more than me. So I don't want to be like Paul. But what I'm saying is that I pray a lot. As far as I'm concerned, and God is witness of that, I pray a lot in tongues. But I have learned in my Christian journey that I need to make definite requests to God. I've learned that. I learned that I need to make meaningful requests to God. Hallelujah. Amen. I say hallelujah. Amen. You have a desire to see people saved. That is a burning desire. When you walk, see the people saved in your mind. And say to God, Father, I thank you for giving him the crowd. I thank you for their sins. I thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Because I can see the people getting saved. So it's not just tongue. It's mixed. You see, I'll pray with my spirit, but I'll pray with my mind also. The two of them are in there. Hallelujah. I'm praying that God may bless you. Can we give a big hand to our Lord? Hallelujah! I say hallelujah! Hallelujah! Your year is blessed. I say your year is blessed. Anyone that is sick in the house, I want you to stand up. We're going to exercise what we say. Anyone that is sick in the house, I want you to stand up. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Any person that is sick, come and see me. I'm going to exercise this right now. Because for me, Preaching without demonstrating it also is something else. The Bible says that he does not just preach, but he lives and he walks the word. Come, my dear. Come. All of you come. Stand apart. Eh? You know, we, we have. So if there's too many people, some sit and I pray for a group first. Stand apart. Stand apart. The rest you wait. Go there. You wait there. 
go over. You go over. Oh, is that your child? You stand here. You stand there. Okay. So stand there. Wait there. Okay. What is wrong with you? Allergy. I know what he's suffering from. You? Allergy. Okay. You? Okay. I'm going to train you. Okay. Number one, this is what we're going to do. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to close your eyes. And I want you, I want you to see yourself as healthy as you can. Hallelujah. See the skin disease disappear. See the, the struggle disappear. Are you seeing it? All of you, are you seeing it? Do you see yourself healthy? Are you seeing it? Are you seeing it? You see? Okay. Now, I want you to ask, a, I want you to, to, to ask a, a definite thing to God. If that sickness, I want you to call the name of the sickness and say, God, I want to be healed from this thing. Just say it. Say the name of that sickness. Say, I want to be healed from it. Then you say, by your stripes, I am healed. Do you see in your spirit Jesus being crucified for that sickness? Look at it. Look at it. Do you see the nails going through his hand and his blood coming out? Do you see that? Are you seeing it? Are you seeing the cross? Okay. Say, I receive right now from the cross what you have done for me. In the name of Jesus. See it rising from the dead. See the empty tomb. You have never been there, but see the tomb open. Do you see that? Do you see Jesus? Do you see the tomb open empty? And declare now, I am healed. I am healed. Say, I am, I am healed. Say, I am healed. In the name of Jesus. Say, I am healed. Do what you couldn't do before for those who it's a struggle. Do what you couldn't do before. Believe it. Believe it. Do what you couldn't do before. And just do it by faith. You're receiving your healing right now. In front of the people, you're receiving your healing. You're receiving it. You're receiving it. That, that, this, that thing is cleared. Eh? You see it gone. It's gone. Finitos. Finitos. <laughs> Hallelujah. It is done. There is no magic in this. There's no magic. That's how it's happened. Now you know why we lay hands on you. It's just to confirm with, with you. Otherwise, sometimes you doubt. It's to help you. Otherwise, we don't need that. Hallelujah. Let me put my mask and just pray for you guys. Thank you, Holy Spirit. But guys, wait for us. We're almost finished. Be healed. Now. Be healed. Now. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed from that thing in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. You can go and sit. Get, receive your healing. Go. Rejoice. It's finished. Now, for those who think it's a joke, come around next Sunday, you will hear the testimonies. Line up. Quickly. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Line up, line up. Okay, what are you suffering from? Depression. What is that? Skin. Remember I said people who suffer from skin this year? This, this is weird. It will go. Yes? Huh? You don't have it. Hearing. So you can't hear? Not so much. Okay. And you? Depression. You don't have it. It's not there. No. There is nothing. There is nothing. I'm saying there is nothing. What happened? When? Show me. Is it painful? There's nothing. Okay. I want you to do the same thing. You know why today I'm doing this? So that this is a class. Huh. So close your eyes. See your healing now. See it. Do you see it? Okay. See yourself as there is no pain there and you can lift up your hand. Can you see yourself lifting up your hand? I want you to believe that. See yourself, no depression. See yourself, no skin disease. 
See yourself with no cancer. See yourself. What was that again? Hearing. You hear. Okay. Start to see. Do you, do you see that thing that you complained about going? Do you see it going? Do, do, you, do you have a... No. See yourself being completely healed. Unless you see yourself, I'm not praying. When you see yourself, you just lift up your hand so that I can know who has seen himself. himself. You see yourself. You see yourself. If you don't see that in your mind, you see it. Lift up your hand for all who see it. You see yourself being healed. You see it. If you see it. Thank you, Jesus. If you see it. Okay, now say in the name of Jesus, I am healed. See Jesus bearing your sicknesses. See the cross. See the nails on the cross. There's no cancer in the body of anyone standing here. There's no, there's no those nonsenses. Children of the most high. There's no thing of that. Depression is gone. You are a child of God. You can't be depressed. You are too blessed to be stressed. Okay, say I receive it now and I am healed. Do what you couldn't do before. Do what you couldn't do. My God, look at this. Look at this. You are healed. You are healed. Look at this. Look at this. She's healed. Okay, let me pray for you guys now. Receive completely. No! Out! It's foul spirit. Out! Out! You will go to the doctor. He will tell you there's nothing. In you. you don't have any cancer. I'm telling you the truth. Open up. Heal. Heal in the name of Jesus. Heal in the name of Heal in the name of Jesus. Ha. Huh. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. It's done. Women, you we can test. Because the other one, they need to go to the doctors. From which distance can't you hear? You can hear. Are you sure? Your ear is back. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah! I say hallelujah! Hallelujah! Praise God! This is the secret. Pick her up. Pick her up. Hey, Portia, this is the last time. This is the last time this thing will ever trouble you. In the name of Jesus. Help her, help her. Help her. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, come here. Let me help you right. Give me that hand. <laughs> you are so careful with it. So I am healed. In the name of Jesus, come with me. I am healed. Pick it up. Hey! Woo! Hey, Holy Spirit, thank you. This one, you can bless somebody with. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. It's done. I say it is done. Oh, yeah. This is how you do it. Yeah. I say this is how you do it. Are you going to go and heal the people? Oh, yeah. Remember Jesus said, go heal the sick. He didn't say, go, I'm healing the sick. He said, you go and heal them because he has given you everything to heal the sick. Yeah. It's already in your spirit right now. Receive that grace. Receive. 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 Receive the grace to heal the sick. Stand up. Let me pray for you that there may be a ministry of healing in your life like never before. A ministry of healing. There is people that are called to heal the sick and everybody should heal the sick. Hallelujah. Everybody should heal the sick. Huh. There is somebody, your area of influence in healing is emotional healing. God has graced you with emotional healing. Uh, you call yourself counseling, but it's emotional healing. Hallelujah. All these people that are in that case, I want you to stand up. Because from the emotion, you get to the spirit. Hallelujah. Okay? There is, come, the two of the three. Come. Why is it all women? Guys? <laughs> we don't have men counselors. Hi. Hi, hi. Hi, bo. Hi, bo. Okay? Like I say, some wait. We, we just do so that you will not crowd. Okay? Some of them sit on the empty chairs. Sit on the, in the front chairs is fine. You can sit in there. Okay. Okay. How many people you want to help? 
How many people per week you want to help? No, multitudes is not a number. A thousand people. Okay. Fifty. When? The whole year or just? In a month. A thousand people, yes? Fifty per week. Five hundred. Per week. <laughs> Fifty per week. Twenty. Thirty per week. Close your eyes. See the number that you see. See them streaming to you. Do you see it? Do you see the people coming? Do you see them coming? Do you see them coming? The Bible says, see, I have given. Do you see it? Say, Lord, I receive it. Say, I receive them because I'm going to help them by your grace. Thank you for equipping me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Receive that. Receive that. Receive that. Receive. Receive grace. Receive grace. Ha! Woo! Come. Receive that grace now. Go and equip the saints. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to have communion. To seal. Oh, come, come. Ah, there are few, some. Few, 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 few. Okay. Then, eh? Come on, you are pregnant, so you are sending here. What must we do? You want to help them in your pregnancy, even? Ah, thank you, Jesus. Okay. How many people you want to help this year? At least 500. How many people this year? 200 people. Go write it down there. Eh? How many people? 40. You must write it, diarize it. Yes? This is whole year. How many people? 30. 30 is good. Yes. One? Eh? One? Okay. 30. 30. Okay. Just close your eyes. See both people. See them coming to you. Do you see it? See them. See them. See many people coming to you. Do you see them? Amen. Okay, you saw it, so I can pray. Receive grace. Did you see it? You saw it. Receive grace. Did you see it? Do you see them coming to you? Huh? Do you see them? You don't see them yet, okay? Do you see them coming to you? Receive grace. Do you see them coming to you? Receive. Do you see them coming to you? Take. Do you see them coming to you? Take. Do you see them coming to you? Do you see your people? Huh? Do you see your people coming? Do you see people coming to you? Tick. Do you see them in your spirit coming? You start to see them. Now, in the name of Jesus. Tick. Jesus' name. You are blessed. Go and see. Can we give a big hand to our Lord? It's finished. So, that's how you do it. So today, I was not running around praying for you because I want to teach you something. And if you learn this, Nothing will be impossible for you. When you feel depressed, say to God, let me see myself healthy. And then you call it. You will see. Worship him. Can you? Let's have a communion for today. And uh, right after the communion, we have an offering. And then we finish. Then I'll be praying for those who want further ministry. Come. Come. So uh, the people that they say you have cancer and I prayed for, go back to the hospital, please. Go back for a test. Don't just say, I receive it by faith. No, go back for a test. And then come and testify after you have a test. Because this thing will disappear from your body. Amen. Hallelujah. It won't, it won't be found. It can't be there. In the name of Jesus. Let's do the communion quickly. Father, we thank you for this time of communion. I'm praying that your spirit may bless us as we have a communion. And let each person, Lord, take this communion in the revelation of the blood and the grace of God. I give you praise, Lord. I give you praise.
Your name is powerful. Your name is powerful. Your name is awesome. Your name is powerful. We give you all the glory. Thank you for the communion. We give you praise. We can also have an offering in the same atmosphere. Then we're going to conclude the service. Let's quickly go. God is giving you a new chance, a new beginning, and He wants you to hold it tight with your hands. For He's giving you a new beginning. He's giving you a new beginning. He's giving you a new beginning. Listen to me. He's giving you a new beginning. There is a fresh anointing for a new start in your life right now. God is giving you a fresh start. God is giving you a new start. Listen to me. God is putting in your spirit something new right now. The Lord of heaven is changing something in your life right now. I see people suddenly, suddenly the thing that you are trusting God for are coming in your life right now. I trust that you hear what I'm saying. There is a sudden, there is an anointing of a sudden. Suddenly, things will turn around. Suddenly, the people that oppose you, suddenly, something will change. There is a sudden anointing. There is a sudden anointing right now. For those who can believe this word, there is a sudden anointing in your life. I say there is a sudden anointing. You will testify of the glory of God. You will testify. And I want to make a bold statement that before the end of February, you will have a testimony that will blow your mind. I said you will have a testimony that will blow your mind. Before the end of this month, you will have a testimony that will blow your mind. I decree it in your life. I declare it right now in the name of Jesus. I decree it and I declare it in the name of Jesus. The Lord is moving in your life right now. The thing that was haunting you is now gone in the name of Jesus. I said the thing that was haunting Oh, people, listen to my voice. The thing that was haunting you, you can say bye-bye to that thing. I say you can say bye-bye to that thing. Your Red Sea has been parted this morning. I say your Red Sea has been parted this morning. Oh, I pray that you may have the ears of a school to listen to what I'm saying. I decree in your life right now that open doors are in your life. You see, this morning at 6 God wake me up and he said, go to Revelation 3, 8. And that way I say, I put an open door before you. So I decree in your life right now that an open door has been put in front of you. Hey! Hey! Receive right now. In the receive. It's fine. Receive right now in the name of Jesus. Open doors. Open doors. Open doors. Open doors. For Revelation 3, 8. Throughout this week. Speak it throughout this week. Declare it throughout this week. An open door has been set before you right now. God said, and no man will be able to shut it down. It's your door of opportunity. It's your door of opportunity. It's your door of opportunity. Some of you, Mark Asobe, some of you will be surprised by a promotion. You are not expecting a promotion, but God is saying, I'm lifting you up. He said, I'm lifting you up. I'm lifting you up right now. He said, I'm lifting you up, service the spirit of the living God. Some of you didn't pray for, but God said, I'm giving it right now. In the name of Jesus. Can we give a big hand to our Lord now? Hallelujah. 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 If you are here and you are not born again, and you want to give your life to Jesus, wherever you are, lift up your hands. 
Lift up your hand if you say today, I want to give my life to Jesus. Please, lift up your hand from wherever you are. If you say, this is my day, I want to make right with Jesus. Lift up. We prayed for you so you were saved. Last time you did it. Uh, lift up your hand right now. If you are here and say, this is my day, and I want, to have a, I want to give my life to Christ Jesus. I want you to lift your hand from where you are. You see, we are in the, at the end of the age. We hear rumors of wars. And the Bible says that this will happen at the end of the days. And you are not saved because you come to church. You are saved because you, you give your life to Jesus and have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. So if you are here, don't let church cheat you. I want you to say, today I want to make right with Jesus. If you are here in that case, lift up your hand before I close. Lift up your hand before I close. Say, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to make a right with Jesus. Lift up your hand before you close. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stand up from where you are. Stand up. Let us see you. Stand up. Stand up. Say, I want to give my life to Jesus today. I want to give my life to Jesus today. This is my time. I want to give my life to Jesus. Come in front. Come forward. Let me pray with you. Come. Quickly, quickly, quickly. More people, come, 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 come. Clap your hand for them. Let them come. Let them proceed. Come in front. Come in front. Thank you, Jesus. Come, come, come. It's your time. It's your time for salvation. Come. Let them come. Let them come. It's your time for salvation. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It's your time for salvation. It's your time for salvation. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Stand here. Say with me, say, dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for the cross. Thank you for dying for my sins. Today, I'm asking you to forgive me. Forgive my son. The son of not believing in you. I change my mind today. I put my trust in you. I believe in my heart that you died for my sins and you rose again. I confess with my mouth that you are my Lord. Wash me clean with your blood. Give me your Holy Spirit. Thank you for my salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Now we see the anointing of the Holy Spirit now. We see the anointing. Receive the anointing of the Holy Ghost now. Receive, receive, receive. Receive the anointing of the Holy Ghost now. Receive the anointing of the Holy Ghost now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Pick it up. Pick it up. May the Lord give you grace. May the Lord give you grace. God will move in the things that are worrying you right now. And God is going to give you peace. God is going to give you peace. The, the worries are going to be wiped away by the Spirit of God now. Woo! Holy Spirit. Receive grace now. Receive grace now. In the name of Jesus. Receive grace. Show. Okay. Again, again, again. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Can we give a video to our Okay. Listen to me. We have to take them out. Follow that thing. Follow that thing. This one will find you later. In heaven, in fact, follow that. Hallelujah. Can we give a big hand to our Lord? Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for coming. And I didn't welcome uh, Pastor uh, Tao. Can you stand up? Let's just welcome in the house. Stand up. Hallelujah. Pastor Isaac Tao is a pastor in, he has his church in Lady Van. And I've ministered to that church a couple of times. And today he surprised me with his visit. He didn't tell me he's coming. But may God bless you and may you prosper in what you do. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So we have finished our service. Remember the Bible reading plan is 50 Rand. It's outside where you can get it. It's exciting. I've been reading it. It's easy to read the scripture with that. Because it's not a lot to read it today and the other day. So it's 50 rand, you can get it, it's there. Those who want to pay already for the night to honor uh, the king, the machine will be there for the payment. Now you need to know that Christianity is simple. Don't make it difficult. Listen to me. Working with God is simple. I know people are making it difficult. There's so many drama going into the church. 
for somebody to be healed, I need to jump up, jump up like this and say, you are healed. No, you can just say you are healed. The drama is just something that we put around. Hallelujah. So we have put so many drama in the church. Minister will heal. Heal. You are healed. There's so many drama going on here. We are out of the drama. You are healed. In the name of Jesus. I say in the name of Jesus. There's a man that I love. Somebody came, he said, I'm in, I'm in witchcraft, I have a third eye. He said, where, where is that? He said, here. He said, I don't see it, but in Jesus' name, today it's gone. That was the last time. And the person was delivered. Imagine the person had gone to a camp. Woo! He said, finish. Finish. I declare to you today that your situation has changed. In the name of Jesus, receive it in your spirit. Receive it in your spirit. And that's why people jump on the tummy of people to say, I'm healing me. This is nonsense. By God's grace, now you are in knowledge. You are from divine. If you allow somebody, if you ever go to somebody, you wash you with soap and you come here. Before we deliver, you will do a fivefold ministry on you. Because here you are healed. And it's a ministry of faith. We stand by faith. No, I don't blame the other people. But I'm saying here it's by faith. So if I say you are healed, please don't wait to vomit before you are healed. You are healed. You go. Hallelujah. And you know sometimes people vomit here. It's not a problem. But I'm saying I want you to have a mindset of faith. That's what I came to teach today. Say I have received my deliverance. People listen to me. If there was a spirit troubling you, you can stand today and say, Lord, in Jesus' name, I receive deliverance. And you will see that spirit will live because the light of God will shine in you and the spirit has no right to be there. You are a child of God, born from above. Go blessed and we'll see you by his grace.